This Choircast podcast is brought to you by The Resurrection of Jesse Barrow, novella and collected works by Brandon Dragan, winner of the American Bar Association Journal's Ross Writing Contest. Folks in these parts like two things most of all, sausage and justice, though I reckon they wouldn't much care to watch how either one is made. When the mayor of a small town in rural Alabama is murdered, the desperate search for answers leads police to Jesse Barrow, a young drunk with an axe to grind. Despite professing his innocence, Jesse finds himself accused with only one way to keep himself out of the electric chair, to betray his one true friend. The Resurrection of Jesse Barrow is a fast-paced novella that confronts miscarriages of justice and age-old misconceptions about privilege. This collection features three additional short stories, including Advocat, winner of the ABA Contest for Legal Fiction. The Resurrection of Jesse Barrow is available on Amazon, Audible, and everywhere books are sold. Happy New Year, heathens. You're listening to the Deadly Face podcast where religion and crime collide. It's 2024. I'm still Lola. I'm still Lacey. And the shit is still crooked. The mind that was in Jesus, that mind is in me. Without me, life has no meaning. Why would God tell you what I'm thinking and tell you what I've said to my wife or my husband when you're not around? It's because I'm the pastor of the church and I need to know. This is the only place where you can see truth. Yes. What's up? What is up? Welcome back. A new year. We hope you had good holidays. Yes. It's not a new me, but it's a new year. That's for sure. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know like everyone's like, new year, new me. No, it's not a new me. No. Same old me. In this case has everything to do with, you know. Oh. Diet culture and like all the things that come with a new year maybe. Yeah. And a new so this person. This is like on par. This this case mm-hmm. is like a new person. Every time you turn around, you're like, wait, okay, who's she gonna be now? Who is she? Mm-hmm. Let's just the title of this is just who is she? Who is she? What's next? <laughs> Let's see. The uh we're we're not gonna start you off this year with something gory or gross or, you know, absolutely crazy. We're just gonna start you off with some We'll do that on the second episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll just really rail you with that. <laughs> anyway, why did I say rail you? God, <laughs> whatever. I'm going to bang your butt. <laughs> That's from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Please. I, was, I know you probably haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I have not gotten there. And I was about to be like, where the hell did that come from? Oh my gosh. Well, j- Bob's like, do you want to phrase it that way? Are you sure? <laughs> I'm going to your butt. Oh my gosh. Well, just like last year, we're as crazy as ever. So that's not going to change. So buckle up, buttercups. But yeah, let's let's get into this episode. Lola, who are we talking about today? We're talking about Brittany Dawn. Dun, dun, dun. Nelson? Yeah, I think Nelson. It's been Brittany Dawn Davis. It's been, now it's Brittany Dawn Nelson. And it was yes. just Brittany Dawn or Brittany Dawn Fitness. If you know her handle on Instagram from the 2014 Tumblr days. Well, when she was in business, like, and she had her LLC, it was like Brittany mm-hmm. Dawn Gershon, or it started with a G. What? And I think that was her previous last name. Like her maiden name? I think maybe her maiden name or... Is Dawn her middle name? Yeah, yeah, Dawn's her middle name. It's not her maiden name. No, no, I don't think, hmm. I don't think so. The more you know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Maybe maybe it is her her maiden name and she just carried it over and it's that like hyphened last name, you know, where somebody's like... Possibly. Yeah, I don't know. There's almost nothing on the internet about her prior to like her getting, like her with the married name, Brittany Dawn Davis. So her, Brittany Dawn Davis, that was a married name. Yes. Okay, so Davis, then, it, then... Davis is the the... First husband. Okay. So Brittany Don Gershinger, G, whatever the fuck. I can't remember what it is. I have it. I have it. And we'll talk about why, how I have it later. But yeah, that must have been her maiden name. I guess so. Yeah. Lots of of last name changes. Let's do trigger warnings before we get into this. Yes. Trigger warnings. We're going to be talking about eating disorders, diet culture, fraud, theft, biblical manipulation, and possible animal abuse. Mm. So, ew, big ick. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's tell her story. She's she's a character, and and Lacey definitely helped me with this episode. So we had have to give you some credit because <laughs> she helped me with some notes. Because I got a little bit chicken brained or like 
uh, my, I got smooth brain for a second, it, you know? It, Brit, well, the holiday smooth brain? Brittany Dawn, <laughs> there is so much out there about her. Just if you Google her, it's just like nonstop. Everybody talks about her. There's a lot of controversies uh, surrounding this woman. Opinions versus facts are sometimes hard to navigate. Yeah, especially in this. Well, and like when I started deconstructing in 2020 was when she kind of had one of her big shifts. And so a lot of people started talking about her and like what happened prior. And I just kind of was in the world of like Christian criticism, basically. And so she was she was like a hot topic within the, the you know, that kind of content. And so... Yeah, you knew about her like way before I did. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of followed this whole thing for a while. Yeah, I stumbled upon her like two years ago, yeah. I think. Yeah, mine, mine was 2020, so not that. I, I didn't follow it much more before you. Yeah. So, Brittany, Dawn, whoever. Uh, fitness coach, very fitspo forward. She's an influencer from Dallas, Texas. She was born in 1991. And she says that she overcame an eating disorder. She mentions two different ones. Mostly, I think, orthorexia was was slash is the vice. What Um, what is that? Orthorexia? Let me Google it and give you a specific. Orthorexia. Is that different? Orthorexia nervosa is characterized by an excessive preoccupation with eating healthy food. So like oh, diet food okay. or clean food, like an obsession with just eating like Whole30 gotcha. or the clean diets. Kind okay, of thing. okay. That makes sense. No refined sugars, no processed foods, whatever. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Especially being in the Fitzbo world, it, you have to eat. Yeah. And you often post like, what I eat in a day? Kind of thing. Almost everyone out there has seen that. If you oh, yeah. follow anybody that does vlogging or fitness, fitness things, yeah. most mm-hmm. of the time, they, they'll they be like, what I eat in a day? <laughs> so with that, she just assumed became obsessed with trying to eat the healthiest way possible. But it started to blur the lines of health and eating disorder. Yeah, that makes so, sense. It, it does. Yeah, which is sad. And I hate that she has dealt with that or is dealing with that because I wouldn't wish this on anybody. I don't care who you are. Even if you can believe it, I I wouldn't wish it on like Charles Manson or... Mm. You're a better person than I am. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I said I know. <laughs> I don't know that. No, you're you're probably better than me. I say that, but probably not. I still probably wouldn't wish it on anybody. No, I don't, I don't think so, really, if you had that power. Mm-hmm. So she became, you know, a fitness coach because she wanted to inspire people. Her YouTube bio says, before all else, daughter of the king. And she also has testimony videos up where she talks about, you know, her, her journey with fitness and her journey with God, mm. all that good stuff. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. We're going to get into religious stuff because we already talked about it with trigger warnings. So, right. And and we are the Deadly Faith Podcast, so, you know, that's... You know how it goes. You know the drill. <laughs> that's where we're headed. <laughs> so, she actually put out a very recent, like, late 2023 testimony. And so, I'm drawing some of her information from this. Okay. So, even though it was put out in 2023, she talks about her past in this. Gotcha. Backtracking. She said that at six years old, she was sexually exposed to things, Hmm. question mark. She did not elaborate. I tried to find, I have watched so many of her videos, I hate myself. (laughs) Because I didn't want to give her the view. I didn't want to look at it, but I needed to hear it from her mouth to see what what she was going to say. Right. About all her controversy. And that's... (sighs) It, it, that's interesting to me that she says that because when I was like deeply religious and in the cult, some of their beliefs around sexuality, porn, all of that stuff had manipulated me to believe that I was exposed to certain things that were unhealthy for my sexual, you know, 
sexual uh, awakening, you know, yeah. um, that had a detrimental impact on me. And mm-hmm. I held that against my parents for a really long time. And then when I deconstructed and like learned about sexuality and what happens to our bodies as we are developing and coming of age and stuff, and then understanding how much religion impacts you and causes trauma, I was able to realize that religion impacted and harmed my sexuality way more than anything I was quote unquote, exposed to as a child. Yeah, like external factors yeah. beyond religion. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's confusing. She really didn't give any more information besides that. She doesn't have to explain anything more because it's her childhood, whatever. But it just kind of leaves a lot of lingering questions. Mm-hmm. And I kind of feel like it may have been blown out of proportion. That's what it sounds like, but, like to me, let me in explain. my opinion. I... <sighs> Okay, she talks about like, oh, I was masturbating at age six. Yeah. A lot of kids do that. That 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 can that can happen. Around that age. And it doesn't mean that like they're abused and it doesn't mean you're exposed to things that you shouldn't have been. It's not sexual. And we've talked about this. I think we talked about it with a, f- a fish fish dude. Our fish first yes. episode. Oh, yeah, him. With the whole like most of it has to do with sensation and not mm-hmm. sexuality. I don't know if that's the case. Yeah, here. especially at that age when you like you rub up against something and you're like, oh, that feels good. Let me explore oh, that. that feels, like, yeah, yeah, and that's very much normal. Um, and exploring your own body and mm-hmm. is very normal. It's not sexual at that age until you get you know older and start developing and and all of that stuff. But not to say that it when you hit puberty. Yeah. Not to say that she didn't have some kind of sexual trauma, whether that was being exposed. She very or well not. could have. Yeah. It could go either way. She's just left the question open. And <laughs> and that's where my doubt comes in when it's something is so yeah. open ended. Like when I tell my story, sure. I I don't go into details, but I'm like, I was sexually assaulted as a child. Like I don't that puts a period it, it, on it. It does. Though. Like when you say that, I don't have to go into detail about what happened, but you know that there, you know, around about what what could have happened, but it didn't go as far as being me being raped. Raped, but yeah, it's just she's just very vague mm-hmm. with like a lot of her testimony. Mm-hmm. I feel because like she would say something and say, but mm-hmm. but what does that mean? <laughs> or Fill in the blanks. I don't know. So I feel like she does that a lot with like everything. <laughs> she knows how to manipulate things. Okay. Whether or not she means to, she knows how to do it, you know, so that she can avoid things. Yeah. A lot of her talking is like word salad. It's like, I'm going to say a whole bunch. Word salad? Word salad. It's like, I'm going to say a whole bunch of stuff, but it means nothing. <laughs> I got that from Stephanie Harlow. I've heard her say that before. Shout out Stephanie Harlow, please. Please acknowledge our our (laughs) Our being. We love you. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so besides that, she skips forward. Doesn't talk about anything else with her childhood except that one part. She says at 16, she started like going to church. She wasn't raised in Mm -hmm. church from what... It sounds like. I gathered from this testimony. Uh, So at 16, there's like this revival deal and there's an altar call. And so she gives her life to God. Okay. So 16, she's saved. So later on that year, she goes to like another revival thing, okay. devotional. And a pastor pointed at her and said, you're going to speak to millions. Okay. And if that's not manifestation, I don't know what is. Because <laughs> she did. God, she did. She, she so did. She calls that God marking her at a young age for a higher purpose which is very exclusionary. And you will notice this throughout her story with religion is that she has a very exclusive theology. It's all about me. Me, 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 me. I'm special. Me, me, me. Yep. Whatever. I definitely remember Jesus being that way. <laughs> I know. He was a thousand percent. Like they are one of the same. so solid. <laughs> yeah, no, huh? him and Brittany are just like two peas in a pod. I agree. I agree. She might be God. <laughs> She might be Jesus. So, but she said that she was unaware of spiritual warfare 
I can't stop smiling. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm aware of speaking. Totally understand because I know where this because is going. Because she visualizes, she, okay, if you guys watch her reels and don't, but like if you watch her reels on Instagram, she's like, the devil is fighting. The devil is, she's categorizing the devil in a way that's just like the boogeyman or like the red little dude with the pitchfork. It's the same, like she's literally pushing that narrative. That's such a, a primary, immature type of Christianity. Yes. It's it's like she's going back to the satanic panic days. Like Absolutely. It's like she started at square one, like all the way back in like the 60s with Christianity. Yeah. And it's just like slowly moving forward. And I get that like she's a newborn Christian now. She's still yeah. like learning things. But with the amount of information in your hands at all times, as a human now that may own a phone. It's like, ah, mm-hmm. ah, whatever. I feel like we see this a lot, though, in people who um, decide to, like, give their life to Christ, but, like, have had some kind of trauma in the past. And so they decide, okay, I can only feel fulfilled and have this amazing life if I give my life to Jesus. And the only way I can give my life to Jesus if, is, it, is if I do it 100%. And so you see them going to the extremes with literally everything. And they become like just perfectionists type people mm. yeah. with their religion. And they hyper focus on it. Case and fucking point myself. That's exactly what I did. Like it shows passion, but it lacks, you know, substance. C- critical thinking. Mm-hmm. Your critical thinking mm-hmm. goes. Out the window. She she believes spiritual warfare is happening. And she said at that time she was unaware of it. But that she would soon be pursued by the devil. So she's like 18 in college. She stops going to church. She's partying. She's drinking. She's having sex. She's masturbating. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it's like so bad. She was she's masturbating. masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's she's going into a more worldly as a, you know, mm-hmm. a Christian of her beliefs. Yeah. Feels like she's going to a worldly place, worldly mindset. So oh, she's, no. I know she's in college, she's partying, whatever. Uh, and fitness starts to catch her attention. So she's in college, like around 2013 area, 2012. Okay. okay. Something like that. So she she's attracted by the pin, Pinterest Fitzbo. Mm, mm, so Instagram's okay. not a huge deal right now. Yeah. At this time. Like 2011, 2013, it was just like new. It was still newer. Still newer. Yeah. Everyone's still on Facebook at this point. So she starts idolizing that thin body type. She says she started starving herself and that the devil created her eating disorder thoughts. This is so misplaced. Ooh, uh, okay. Uh, also, it's invalidating that to anybody so... that doesn't identify with this type of theology. It's very exclusive. And to just like, I hate it. And I literally mm. was writing about this today. I mm. hate it when any kind of mental health disorder or diagnosis is automatically blamed on the devil. Or label a sin. Yeah, because yeah. she definitely, she's like an eating disorder is a sin. No, it's not. Uh, it's a disease. It, it, yes, and to label it like that, like that it's a sin or that it is of the devil makes you believe or feel like, oh, if I just pray or if I'm just committed to Jesus enough, all of that will go away. Yeah, I'll be saved. All of this will go away and I, I won't have an eating disorder anymore. I won't deal with anxiety. I won't deal with depression. She was blaming her eating disorder on the devil. She was struggling with alcohol through college and she was, you know, starving. Uh, And she says that she turned from alcohol to sex and abused sex, which is possible or natural exploration, question mark. Doesn't give much more information on that. Yeah, part of me is like, was she just being a normal college student. teenager <laughs> like just experiencing with raging life. hormones <laughs> exactly yeah i feel like it it probably was a lot of natural things that just felt shameful maybe especially in this new context 
For sure. Yeah. So she's becoming depressed. Um, but, you know, she's still like on the fitness journey. So she, someone in her like fitness circle is like, hey, you should do bodybuilding, like the bikini shows and stuff because you have the body for it. So oh, wow. it just throws her even further down the rabbit hole of starvation. And she gets in doing that for a little bit. And she, now Instagram's picking up a little bit because it's like near the end of 2013. And she is getting attention on Instagram. She's She's got that like, what some people would say is an ideal body for a female, Mm -hmm. whatever. So she goes into personal training. She decides, you know, that she's going to pursue that route instead. And so she launches a business. Here we go, into fitness. She obviously, you know, going into fitness, she was working at like a gym at first, uh, just like a commercial gym. And she's not making a lot of money. And she claimed to have training in nutrition and eating disorders, as well as fitness and, you know, Mm -hmm. all that stuff, exercise. So this is not true. We don't have any credible sources that show her education. Or certifications or nothing. Nope. Okay. No. And do we know what she was going to school for when she was in school? I don't know originally what her major was. I wonder if it was just general studies because I didn't see much about that. She And she doesn't talk about it. See, she leaves all these blanks. It's like, what were you going for? What's happening? My thought is because (laughs) of the person she is, that the reason that she leaves that out is because she didn't finish, in my opinion. Probably. So if she says she went to school and mm-hmm. she did she didn't actually finish her degree, that's something that some people would look down on her upon and she doesn't like that. And it could change yeah. people's view or opinion of her. So she just leaves it out. Makes sense. Possibly. Allegedly. In my opinion. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so she's working at this gym. She's not making a lot of money. Like seven to eight dollars an hour. Plus, oh, okay. on top of that, whatever type of like commission you're going <laughs> to you get. You said seven to eight and I heard 78 and I was like... 78 an hour? Fuck, no, thank you. Who cannot make seven a living to eight. $78 an hour? Okay, that makes more sense. In this time that she's working at a commercial gym, she also gets married. Okay. Married uh, to a guy named Zach Davis. Oh, okay. That's where Davis comes this comes in. Yeah. Yeah. So they were high school sweethearts. So there's, I I know as far back as 2009, they were together. Okay. From So it's 2009 to around 2017 that their relationship was alive. So almost 10 okay. years, you know? Okay. I wonder if it was like an on and off thing because she said she had a lot of sex in college. That's so, what I, I wonder too, uh, if it was just like they stayed it? together in high school. Maybe they were like on and off in college. Then they mm-hmm. got married. Or you know. was she having a lot of sex with him? I don't know. Could be. I sex outside questions. of marriage? Could be. Y- you know? Who knows? Well, her social media is starting to go wild because she's posting all of her progress photos and like stuff that she's doing at the, the gym. And people are wanting more. hmm You know? Uh, and she's coaching on things that she is not licensed to. Mm-hmm. The the macros, the micros, uh, all the things that a nutritionist or a dietitian should be advising on. Mm-hmm. If a personal trainer ever tries to coach you on this, ask for their credentials because they very well could be a nutritionist or a dietitian as well. On top of, yeah. But most personal trainers that you find in a commercial gym are only licensed to coach you on exercise. Mm-hmm correct, safe form, things like that. And Lola knows this because Lola... I know this because I, used to be. I was a personal trainer, <laughs> <laughs> which goes along with eating disorders. You get into fitness stuff, you know? So I was a personal trainer for like two years. Mm. I didn't work in a gym. I just did private stuff. I don't know if you've talked about, prior to this episode, I don't know that you've talked about your struggles with eating disorder. I don't think no. so. No. No, you, I haven't. No, yeah. Do you, do you want to talk about it or do you want to? I can talk leave? about it. Okay. 
I can talk about it. So my eating disorder, really, I've never had a good relationship with food or my body because the women in my family, primarily my mother, was always dieting and always like exercising like crazy, trying to control what they eat. None of them necessarily had like an eating disorder. None of them were diagnosed with this. It was just, they were uh, immersed in a lot of diet culture, Weight Watchers, you know? Oh, yeah. And and Weight Watchers does things with churches. Oh, yeah, they do. And a lot. yeah, so that was really, that was the only diet company, organization, whatever they are. Program. That I'm familiar with the most. I don't know about Jenny Craig and all that shit. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I yeah. just know about Weight Watchers. So with all of that, watching my mom critique her body, I started to critique mine at a very young age. And I started to consciously like, realize about like controlling food and calories and things like that when I was like 11. Wow. And that's when it started. That's for me, just, like cutting out things. That's just absolutely is, heartbreaking to me. I was a child. I How know. sad is that? My childhood was taken over by an eating disorder. Yeah. You know? And that it's, wasn't my fault. Mm-hmm. It's literally a disease. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I didn't realize how much diet culture was of the 90s, which like I was born in 1990. Okay. So like I am a 90s baby through and through. And I did not understand how large and how vast diet culture was because I didn't grow up in it. My mom never dieted. She was always on the heavier side. Yeah, but she like never lost her like baby weight. You know, it's always what people say, but she never made a big deal about it. Like, you know, somebody's overweight, but you don't, or like overweight from like the standard. Not that I think it was a bad thing. She looked fine in my opinion. Um, But... My mom would also walk around naked and like I would sit in the bathroom (laughs) while she took a bath and we'd just talk. And so like body image was very normalized and diet culture was not something that was brought up. So like it didn't really enter my sphere of like body image stuff until I was like going through puberty and like, but it never developed into like, I need to critique my body more than the average. Like everybody's going to critique their body at some point, but it or at some that makes sense. At, at that time, but not to the extent of like it turning into an eating disorder. Don't take any of this as a how to manual. A how to, yeah. Don't take any of this at all. But I, I would cut out dairy. I would cut out meat. I would cut mm. out carbs. Mm-hmm. I would cut as much as I could out. And eventually, when I got down to about I think I was 82 pounds. I had oh, stunted my growth. My I had God. lost my period. I was losing hair. Jesus I had hair. Christ. I started growing in other places, like on my face, as like, um, your body sometimes will do this. They don't talk about this with eating disorders, but you get really cold. And so your body <sighs> tries to accommodate. It's an adaptation. Yeah. Don't tell me evolution's not real. Right. Fucking okay, seriously. <laughs> seriously. It's an adaptation. Um, because your body thinks, I don't have access to nutrients and I need to keep body heat. I don't have muscle to hold it or fat to hold it. Therefore, I will use one of my other layers to do that. So, Because it is, your body's job is to survive. 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 Be alive. And yeah. that is what it's going to do <laughs> in any way, shape, or form it can. And it will adapt to fulfill that goal. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Yeah. My body had started to eat a lot of its muscle too. Mm-hmm. So like my thigh muscles, it started to eat and it had started on my heart too a little bit. And I have heart issues now, which it could be because of that. I did not even put that together. Yeah. Any of your main like oh big gosh. muscles, your body immediately goes to that first after right. it eats away all the fat um, or like excess energy that it can have. So it will move on to bigger muscle and one of your bigger muscles would be your heart. A heart. That makes sense. So and yeah. your brain, right? Like it eats away your your brain too 
it's it's not one of the first ones though. Okay. To go normally. Okay. Uh reproductive system is one too. It's like not okay. to say your heart isn't vital, but like it just tries to take from things that like your body's very smart. It really is. <laughs> It's very smart. And you're like, I'm not a doctor. Fuck those who needs them. And your body just starts yeah. eating them. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I'm not a doctor. So like some of this may be like, oh, that's not always true. Or right. I don't know. So, but in my case, this is what happened with me. So eventually when I was 14 and my favorite pair of pants fell off of me immediately after I tried to put them on, I said, I got really happy about it. And I was like, but this is my favorite pair of pants. And then I realized, I don't think this is how I'm supposed to feel. And so I went to my mom and said, I think I have a problem. And do you think I could see a therapist? And to her credit, she immediately jumped on board because she knew there was a problem, but she couldn't convince me to eat. Yeah. Like she... (sighs) Listen, this woman kind of tricked me a little bit and it was clever <laughs> and I, I give her credit here. But okay, if you guys know about an avocado, you know avocados have calories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are nature's butter. They're extremely rich and really good fat. Yeah, they know? are. They're so good. They're nutrient dense. Those were well, my children's first foods. Was it all uh, smashed up avocado? It's so good. It still mm-hmm. has a special place in my heart. I love well, avocado. My mom was making something with avocado one time when I was like 13. And I kept looking at it. It looked so good to me. And I was like, I don't know what calories are in that though. It wasn't in my Weight Watchers book. Yeah. So I was like, mom, how many calories are in that? And she's like, Oh, these actually don't have any. They're kind of like watermelon. It's just water. Oh my gosh, she tricked you. Straight up lied to my ass. And I ate so many avocados. And I think that's what kept me alive for a little bit was just that. You know? I fucking believe that. And I like, that is a lie I can get behind. Like, <laughs> I know, percent. I can too. It's, it was clever. It was and eventually clever. my nutritionist was like, Laura, you have to tell her. <laughs> You have to tell her the truth because like she needs to know calories are good. She ate all those and look at her. Nothing's changed, you know? Yeah. Like, so eventually they told me the truth. Whatever. I went to rehab (laughs) for about a year and a half. Went to group therapy. Unfortunately, like I made a lot of great friends there. I learned so much. I had the most supportive dietitians and consultants and psychiatrists, therapists to help me through that stage. Had I not had the access to healthcare that I did have, I don't think I'd be alive because I was, I was full in, but they threatened me with a feeding tube though. And I was like, (laughs) no, (laughs) no. (laughs) Which by the way, they, they do that. Yeah, I I knew they They did that. that. They'll Mm -hmm. threaten me with that. (laughs) So I was never in inpatient rehab. I was only an outpatient. So I was able to go to school and live at home and everything. And I would go there multiple times a week for treatment. Gotcha. So I made a lot of great friends, but unfortunately, a lot of them did not make it out. Mm. And that clinic is closed now, not because they did anything wrong or whatever. It was a great clinic, but Alabama doesn't have a lot of funding for eating disorder clinics, which sucks ass. That's awful. It does. So... <sighs> whatever. But that was a wonderful place that really helped me. And they helped so many other people. Also, they really honed my like art skills. Oh, They noticed that I really took to visual arts and like yeah. painting and things. They were like, let's go with that. Let's all let's, in with that. Yes. So, oh, I love that. I love that. It was great. Rehab and, and all that treatment when I was younger, it really served me well. I'm still not... <sighs> okay. At this point in time, we're recording this late 2023, December 2023. At this point in time, my therapist has told me I am possibly in remission. That's That's, exciting. It's exciting, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm cured. No. You know? Yeah, yeah. You never Mm -hmm. actually, I don't believe that you actually cure an eating disorder. 
You can go into remission though. Yes. For a lot of trauma-based like diagnoses and stuff, um, Mm -hmm. you go into, um, what is the one before remission? Mm. Recovery? Is there, there's another Is it just called recovery? Uh, It might be a recovery. I can't remember. I haven't looked at it. Uh, This is, I learned this when I went through my certification, but. See, you would know better than me. (laughs) you, you, You go into that stage after, you know, like you're, actively suffering from whatever it is, and then you can go into recovery, and then you can go into remission. I might be wrong on the word recovery, but there are like timelines. Like I think it's like to hit remission, it has to be a few years, maybe three to five, and then you qualify, quote unquote, qualify to be in remission. But because you have suffered through that trauma, the trauma never leaves you. You just learn. And this is what I tell my clients every time is when you go through coaching with me, you will not be healed from your trauma. You're going to learn tools and strategies and things to be able to help you take the power back from your trauma. But I can't take what happened to you away. It's always going to be there, but you can take the power back. So basically, that's a, I would assume it's the same thing with um, eating disorders is you're taking the power back, but the trauma that what you've walked through and what you've lived through is always still going to be there. As you say that, I literally, when I think about my eating disorder now, I think about, I call him Ed. I think about Ed (laughs) sitting next to me and telling me the things, like all these thoughts that I hear in my head. Mm -hmm. I will not voice out loud because they are triggering to other people. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think about him saying that to me and then on the other side of me, I have my little baby Lola mm. from when I was a kid. And Sweet I just think, Lola. you actually can't speak to her that way. And here's all the reasons why. Like, mm-hmm. I think about me now being just a protective barrier between them. Yes, I love and that. And I think that's possibly why I'm like now on the very beginnings of remission. Mm-hmm. I can I can see that. I also just like imagine you talking about Ed sitting right beside you, like little Ed, and I just see you like, licking him off the edge of where he's sitting. He's, he's very, I have drawn Ed so many times. He's a cocky he little frat boy. Same. No. No? Dang it. He's, like, he's, he's <laughs> extremely scrawny, but he's mm-hmm. got like, he's got like patchy facial hair mm. and like a mop for hair, like mop hair yes. kind of thing that's like mouse brown. And Ooh. he just looks, he like, he like squints his eyebrows. He's so worried all the time. He's so worried. <laughs> and he like, he just crosses his arms when he looks at me. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, this sounds absolutely God. insane to anybody that doesn't have an it eating does, disorder. Not to me. I, I think it's... Okay, Having well, that visual like concept is, I feel, helpful, especially in Most things like this. Most of us either have Ed or Anna, but my eating disorder manifests in my brain as a man speaking to me. Yeah, I can see that. So it's different for everybody. I don't have an Anna, but I do have an Ed. Yeah. So yeah. I like that its name is Ed. That's awesome. I know, right? (laughs) Uh, So moving on, there's my experience with my eating disorder. That was deep, but necessary. And thank you for sharing. I think that's, it's vital information or like an amazing story to tell. And and yeah, it needs to be talked about. And this is, we'll get into more as Lola shares about Brittany on why Brittany's, Brittany Dawn is necessary to talk about. And she has a lot of um And why she should stop ex- making content. Yeah. Can just I petition altogether. for that? <laughs> I know, right? Can we make a go, not a GoFundMe? <laughs> what is it? Just no, a don't petition. Do yeah, not a GoFundMe. Don't be like Brittany. <laughs> but w- why Lola has lived experience to pull from when talking about Brittany Dawn. So yeah, keep going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I did go down the path of being a personal trainer. I don't have a certification anymore. So I don't do that anymore. I say I'm a a retired personal trainer. (laughs) So it's very easy after being in in diet culture like that to sneak into Fitspo because it seems like a healthier version, like a more, like truly healthy version Mm -hmm. of dieting. So clients wanted to start working with Brittany more on a one-on-one basis. Uh, and they wanted her every time. Oh, wow. Instead of like at a commercial gym, your personal trainers often will switch out or they'll only be there certain days of the week and whatever. Their schedules can change up like that. So they were asking her like, can I just, can I get a plan from you? And can I, like, could you coach me on what to eat and stuff like that? 
And so she wanted to cater to this demographic of clientele that was so interested in her and looking like her. So she decided to create Brittany Dawn Fitness. Mm. Yay! The bane of my existence. No, <laughs> many her people's existence, existence. really. <laughs> Yeah, so in 2014, she created the business. She was giving clients customized workout plans, nutrition plans, and also offering full access to her through like email or video chat for like coaching sessions, like actual personal training sessions yeah, online and just giving them tips or talking them through their plan kind of thing. Gotcha. Which is, uh, that's a really good deal. You know, all those things wrapped up. If you're qualified yeah, I was and say, deliver. If you know what you're doing. And deliver. <laughs> so the business starts to grow. Around 2017, she gets divorced. I'm just going to throw this in there because okay. like, I don't want anyone to wonder where did husband go? Yeah. Because uh, she does get remarried. Spoiler alert. I went down a tiny rabbit hole. Very tiny. We have screenshots <laughs> uh, yes. that we will post. <laughs> but yeah, we will. Uh, we came with the receipts. Actually, Reddit did. And like, thank you, Reddit. Gotta I'm, love Reddit. Gotta I'm becoming love. a Reddit girl. I didn't think I'd be this way, but yeah. whatever. I, so. I have enjoyed a Reddit mm-hmm. from time to time, especially the last Ugh. year. I've really gotten into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, she divorces Zach. I found out through the Reddit threads that she had an emotional affair with someone. And uh, there's more about it, like, in the screenshots of her talking about it. Yeah. But, but I don't know who this person was. I don't know. She is adamant that this was never physical and that she blames a lot on Zach, saying that, like, he didn't treat me like he should have treated his wife. And that's why I would have never cheated had it not been for him. So she's real good <laughs> at manipulating the situation, isn't she? Yeah. That's you know? like, that frustrates me because like, yes, that can be true that like he did not treat her right, but you also had this emotional affair and that is a you problem. That is a yeah. you choice. You chose to stick with the relationship when he wasn't treating you right instead of leaving and and getting a divorce. You chose that. So you have yeah. responsibility in this just like he does. It's sad. I I wonder about Zach. I wonder where he is now. Give I know, us, me too. Give us more details. Spill the tea with us, Zach. Zach, email us at deadlyfaithpodcast at gmail.com. You're welcome here anytime. <laughs> it's a safe space, bud. So yeah, that's just a little side note in the timeline that that is happening throughout this whole growing her business and posting YouTube videos. Like she's growing her YouTube channel at this point. Um like 2015 to 2018 is heavy content of her doing different workout sets and like what I eat in a day, whatever, all that stuff. Becoming the iconic fitness influencer. So iconic. Uh, (laughs) Let me tell you about the plans a little bit more because they are pricey. They come with a, a good price tag. So... They range from $70 to $300. Wow. And with like the higher plans, you get even more access to her. Yeah. Kind of thing. Or like even more FaceTime with her, even more encouragement from her. So it's really, you're just paying for her. Yeah. It becomes closer to like a more one-on-one coaching style type thing. And you know what? She's a beautiful looking girl. She's yeah. real pretty. I will say. She's got that platinum blonde mm-hmm. hair. She's real all-American girl. She's, <laughs> a bar- she's a Barbie, basically. She's like a Barbie. So yeah. you can see why people would want to hear from her anyway and want to like be closer to her. So Yeah. But complaints were happening, even from the get-go. Even from the get-go. So 2014, 2015... When it was first kind of kicking up. She didn't start on a good foot. (laughs) No, 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 no. There there were complaints happening. Um, So clients over the years started to kind of like compare plans with each other. Because, you know, girlfriends, they're like, oh, 
let's get our beach bodies together, be each other's accountability partners. <laughs> so like, let's both get plans. <laughs> Well, oh they both have different body types and different mm-hmm. desired outcomes. Yep. And why did I say it that way? Desired outcomes, outcomes. whatever. <laughs> um. So there, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. So, you know, they're, they're comparing plans and it's like, huh, these are the same. Are right. they not? It's like, these wait. These are the same, like with food and with the plan. Also, our emails look the same. And you're like, that's not, that's not what we signed up for. Like, this was supposed to be more customized. Individualized. Yeah, individualized. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, people are starting to post uh, complaints on her website, Brittany Dawn Fitness, and on her social media. Uh Uh-oh. But she would just delete them. Of course she she did. Or she would block the person. Oh my God. Or she'd not, do both. Whatever. Right. Not a good business practice. Like just going to come out here and say it. If you're tr- trying to start a business and it's largely online, don't delete critiques or questions. No. You know? Your your consumers matter. Mm-hmm. The, the things that they think about your product or if, service matters. If you have bad customer service, you ain't going to have a business for long. Just say it. That's so true. <laughs> Customer service is the heart of any business, I feel. It really is. It doesn't it matter what really you sell. It really is. So, so she was blocking people left and right, deleting their comments like, Whoop, what happened? Who's that? I don't know. Who is she? Mm-hmm. So one victim, her name is Angie Bullock. Uh, there are several interviews with her out there. And she is just like one of the many faces of hundreds of other women that have pretty much the same story. But... Angie just kind of like brought it all to a head. So mm-hmm. she bought a plan because she it, she was preparing for her upcoming wedding. Like, how sweet, how cool. You know, I get it. You want to try to look your very best on that day because of the pictures and stuff. Absolutely. So she just bought like a $70 or $80 plan. And she... Was she was doing it? She was like consistent, consistently working at this plan, trying to eat the way it said, and and trying to move her body right. in all the ways. Like she was putting in the work. Yeah, go Angie. Because, you know, because this plan was cust- supposedly customized. customized to her. So yes, this was this but was she, her. Yeah, her her solution. She, yeah. she trusted in this. And yeah. why would she not? Who lies about being a nutritionist? Anyway, <laughs> allegedly. <it> out. <laughs> so she noticed that she wasn't really getting results after a couple weeks. And she's like, what's happening? So she messaged, you know, Brittany through that email. She never got her, her coaching session with her. She never got any emails back saying like, oh, this is probably why it's not happening or hey, let's adjust this in your plan kind of thing. There was no communication besides like an email that said, you're doing a great job, girl. Keep it up. Some kind of like cookie cutter, basic email template. Yeah. About like with a little bit of encouragement on it. (laughs) I would have been like, are you trying to gaslight me right now? Because like, no, right? <laughs> what? That's not, that's not what I said in any of my emails. Like, I, I had questions and I'm getting no answers. I have questions. <laughs> yeah. No, so, yeah. So she was obviously floored about this. Um, I think she did say that uh, she commented on something of Brittany's saying, hey, I've emailed you a bunch and like, why are you not responding to me? Are you sending me this like stupid template and her shoes deleted? Wow. Like the... The comment was deleted. Of course it was. So she was like, I want to know what's happening here. So she found a Facebook group where a bunch of other victims had started to come together and be like, hey, screenshot your plan. Show us your emails. Like, it was all the same. Oh, my. Hundreds of girls. Hundreds. All had the same thing. And they're all feeling stupid because... I paid 300, I paid 70, I paid 95. 
You all have the same plan and you never talked to Brittany. You never emailed her. Nothing. Like there was no communication and you were supposed to have full access to her. I'd be so pissed. Everybody was mad, <laughs> obviously. So they their emails were going unanswered and a lot of them were already blocked. So they were like, you know what? Let's just report her to the BBB. Fuck yeah, we will. He's still in our money. The better bitch. business bureau. <laughs> so let's skip forward. It's it's 2019. 2019. Brittany Dawn Fitness was receiving thousands of complaints and not addressing any of them. She wasn't giving refunds. She she wasn't doing anything. And she was still selling the plans. Still selling them. For the same prices. Oh, my God. Still selling. And she'd been in business since 2014. Yeah. Okay. S- bitch, Can you imagine? That's five years. You couldn't figure out your shit in five years? Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You couldn't have, like, I don't know, hired a customer service department? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Eventually, it's all coming to a head <laughs> because there's so many comments. You can't delete no. them all. You can't stay on top Mm-mm. of that just by yourself. You can't block everybody. So she starts sending emails back to the victims and she's offering a partial refund, but there's a catch. A catch, you say? I need you to sign an NDA. <laughs> what? And if you don't know what an NDA is, Lacey, what's an NDA? <laughs> a non-disclosure agreement. I'm sorry. Why would I need to sign yeah. an NDA for a refund for a fitness plan? Why? Well, it was to protect her brand and her name, Brittany Dawn. Oh, my God. She... Obviously, nobody's signing this shit because they're only being offered like part of what they paid. And being forced to sign an NDA to get that partial refund. Like, yeah, to, to be like, you'll never talk bad about my brand. You'll, you'll never, whatever. Who gave her this advice? Because if they are a lawyer or attorney or any of the sort, they need to get their license revoked because that was horrible advice because that Agree. went over as well as a bull in a china shop because people are <laughs> not and were not happy about this. And it made her look very bad. Very bad. I agree. I don't know who she was consulting with at that time, but I tell you, it wasn't good. So thankfully, a lot of the clients were able to like dispute their transactions with their banks. So like the banks resolved it. It wasn't Brittany that did anything. But some people weren't able to get their money back. 2019 isn't done yet. There's a fitness convention and a video appears. Oh my gosh, I forgot about this. Is it Casey Campbell or Kathy? I think it's Casey. I think it's Casey Campbell. Okay. Casey Campbell trolled her. <laughs> he trolled her hard. <laughs> at some fitness, <laughs> at some fitness thing. Posing as a dad that hit like his, he was saying like, my daughter bought a plan from you and you stole her money and she never got the plan. And I want the money right now. Like walked up to her and is like holding his hand out to her. And she's like, what? Like her face. She said, Uh what? Awkward. And then her bodyguard stepped Mm -hmm. in. And if you don't know who Casey Campbell is, like, were you about to talk about him? Yeah. No. He's he's like a, I think he's like a prankster type. He has a big YouTube. Yeah. He has like over a million followers on YouTube or subscribers on YouTube. And so like, he's very big. And so this whole thing with Brittany Dawn became such a huge thing within the media uh, that he decided to troll her, uh, bring more light to it while also getting views for his channel. And he was successful in all of them. (laughs) I mean, like, go you. Two birds, one stone. Like, I'm not upset about it. (laughs) No, not at all. So, and we're going to link that video if you want to see it. It's pretty funny. It is. It is. I, I want to say really quick though, like yes. later on, like Brittany Dawn talks about this like way later on. This was like probably recently, the last like couple of months she talks about it and she makes the comment like, he just did it for views. <sighs> but he had <Yeah>. truth. <laughs> he had but, truth. But even if he did, like, right, he had truth. But even if he did do it for views, that's social media. Like I it hate is. it when people say that. You should do it for you. Yeah. 
That's the whole point of social media. Of course I did it for views. Of course I did. Just like you posting all these fucking reels, you want views yes. too. It's the same thing. I just, I hate it when people say that. And when she said it, I was like, oh my God, shut up. <laughs> the kettle calling the frying pan sardines, you know? <laughs> it's just <laughs> the, pot the same calling thing. The kettle black. <laughs> It's the same thing. I don't know. It's the same thing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, it's still 2019. And she puts out an apology video. Mm. You know. So her apology. She says, uh, this is verbatim. I apologize to anyone who feels like they got scammed by me. I was not only the coach, but the sole content creator, customer service, owner, YouTuber, financial advisor, etc. I realized I should have had more help, a lesson I've learned the hard way. This video is no longer on her YouTube page. So you can't see this anymore on there, but it is online in other places. Yeah. Didn't she? I think she deleted it, what, like that very same day that she posted it? It was that same week, I think. Yeah. She had it up for a little bit, but she took it down. Uh, And then she put up another video, like way later on, uh, I think in 2022. Mm. where she, it's the video is <laughs> the video is called calling out the hate oh my god calling out the hate and she says in it that she did have customer service teams where everyone's complaints were handled and that people were just being trolls making false accusations Wh- what so she went directly against what she said yeah. I didn't have customer service teams. I did have customer service teams. I believe that Excuse one is still me. up on her YouTube channel. And there is another video that's like an apology video that she did with her now husband, Jordan Nelson. And she, where she says pretty much the same thing that she's like, sorry that you feel like you got scammed. And it was all her all the time. And she's just like, she got overwhelmed, didn't know what to do. The only thing different about it than the first one is that she's got this big brooding dude next to her and he's whispering sweet nothings to her. It's super gross. Like, yeah, I couldn't make it through. I yeah. couldn't make it through. Mm-mm. But super I was gross. about to say, I was pretty sure in that video, she said the same thing. Like, it was just her. So she goes back and forth. Did you have or did you not? Yeah. Uh, see, that's where all of this gets so muddy, you know? Because I just don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't, know I don't think she, I don't think she had them. I think she's straight up, in my opinion, lying when she says she had them, trying to save face. But she gets so caught up in all of her little lies or white lies or half truths that she falls over her own feet because. No, yeah. She digs her own grave, basically, is. Super, uh, it's a hard, it's a hard backtrack and then forward and it, it gives me whiplash. The things she does, it gives me whiplash. Yeah. So yeah. Let's go forward a little bit to 2020. In 2020, now Lacey found this, this information. Mm-hmm. That, this can you explain, you explained it really yeah. well. You said so, there was a federal payout okay. to businesses. So, yeah, when COVID hit, yeah, some of you might remember that they offered the Paycheck Protection Loans. So they were called the PPE loans. So Paycheck Protection Employee Loan or whatever it stood for. And basically that was offered to any business that was established prior to 2020 that was finding themselves in financial hardship because of COVID. Now, if you were one of those businesses, for all these small businesses, you were able to file um, like apply for it. And then if you're, you met the criteria, which it wasn't very much that you had to meet, you had to, I think, at least have one employee, which if you have a business, you have one because somebody's running the damn thing. Um, And you were established before 2020, then you got a a portion, some kind of portion of, of money. And I think it was based off of like what your income was like, or your taxable income the year prior for your business. I'm not exactly sure how it worked out. But the deal with these loans were that once you pulled these, once you got approved for this loan, as long as you use the money to go towards like your business and paying for your employees and things like that, then the loan would be forgiven by the government. 
And since the loans were set up that way, it was all public or is all public knowledge. So if you- we have a link for that. mm -hmm, We do. Because if you suspect that a business got a PPP loan, which I'm not against a business getting a PPP loan at all, if you needed one, you got get one. Yeah, do it. Yeah, but do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Get your money. Get your money. But it's public, so you can go on there and you can search. And so I found out through some article that she had actually taken out a PPP loan. And I was like, what? So I looked it up. And sure enough, she not only got a PPP loan, but she got out over 20, I think it was like $20,800. She got in PPP loans in 2020. And then I think the next year it was forgiven. So she didn't have to pay any of that money back. But this was in 2020. And she had been having complaints from 2000, 2000, 2014 to 2019. And so was she even selling more things? more fitness plans. I I doubt it. In 2019, she, Brittany Dawn Fitness died. Like that brand died. Yeah. So she crushed her own business, in my opinion, crushed her own business by not taking care of her customers and being fraudulent and doing this whole scam. Even if she didn't mean for it to be a scam, it was a scam. Mm Mm-hmm. Actually, I take that back because all of the all of the shit was the same. So she like, knew what you it knew was. what you were doing. Yeah, exactly. She knew you, what it was. You knew what you were doing. So she destroys her her business. This is not COVID related. Mm-mm. Her business did not. She go doesn't up in, have employees. From what but, she said, but too, she, to like pay, it could be paying herself, which that qualifies, and that's I fine. Guess. But COVID didn't destroy your business. COVID didn't impact your business. Your business already sucked. And a lot of people only got like maybe five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. This bitch pulled twenty thousand. Yeah. How do how do you say that? Twenty thousand eight hundred dollars. There you go. That's right. We don't know how to math, but twenty thousand eight hundred. There you go. (laughs) No, you got it. (laughs) So I just I was like, that's that's. Money with her, it comes back. We'll talk about it more Mm -hmm. as we move on. Mm -hmm. So 2020 was just a silent year for her, but she was coming back. Yeah. In 2021, she was coming back. She was making her game plan. So I just want to go ahead and, and talk about her husband now because they got married in 2021. So while we're in this year, I'm just going to go ahead and give you all the details from it. So she married a guy named Jordan Nelson, and he is an ex-Kansas City cop sued by the ACLU of Missouri for stopping a black man on suspicious activity because he used excessive force. Oh, yeah. So stand-up guy. Real godly. I say, I say very sarcastically. (laughs) So the situation that happened was... Jordan stopped some guy that was walking. He was a black man. And there's body cam footage of this. I'm not, we're not going to link it. There's, uh, we don't need to say that. You can find it if you want to. Yeah. But he stops this guy based on the suspicious activity claim. And uh, this person does not have a weapon with them at all. And he complies with the instructions that Jordan is giving him. So, Suddenly, Jordan just quietly approaches the guy and kicks his legs out from underneath him and slams his face onto the ground, which caused major facial damage. Like, the guy had to have extensive surgery. And I just want to be very clear. The suspicious suspicious activity was WWB. A black man walking at night. Walking while black. That was the suspicious activity. Let's just be honest. Nothing was happening. The dude Mm -hmm. was completely harmless. I don't... And complying. And compliant. I mean, Mm -hmm. he did everything that the cop was... He was not resisting. Whatever. So he he got fired by the police department for this. And good now he's an account manager for a pharmaceutical company. Okay. Random, but okay. He is not like social media forward, but he is... In a lot of Britney's stuff. So like her YouTube yeah. videos, almost all of her reels 
on Instagram he's in too. Yeah. And he's been on the podcast a lot lately. Has he? From like, or at least I guess those few episodes. I don't really listen. I don't listen to her stuff. I just, there's a girl that I follow, B. Haney, and she like yeah. reacts to a lot of her stuff, of of the whole Britney Dawn stuff. And so what I do see is when B. Haney covers it. So I'm not going to talk much more about Jordan. Sounds great. So I'm going to just go ahead. We need to talk about animals while we're here because Jordan has to do with animals. I don't like Jordan, which is Same fine. More. I'm allowed to not like people. <laughs> yeah. Um. So he shot and killed their dog because it was in a hit and run and it had an injury, mm-hmm. like a fatal injury. So he shot it and then they made a video about it and they monetized that video. So they made money off of their dead dog. Yeah. And that's where I have a problem with it. Because when this happened, like people were all up in arms that she didn't take, they didn't take the dog to the vet. And I can understand that argument. But I also, I don't know what the dog looked like. And it could have been more sympathetic. None of us know. Put the dog out of the misery right there. Right. Yeah. And and I will, I will, let's just give them the the doubt. Benefit of the doubt. I was going to say the grain of salt, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say the dog was like completely mangled. Right. And that was what they needed to do. And that was necessary. Okay. A mercy killing is something that's different. Yeah. Don't fucking do a video. Who the fuck are you? And why are you posting it online? That is the most- Didn't think we'd have to write that one down for you. (laughs) Why? I just, that is like mind boggling when people post stuff like that. This isn't the first like weird thing she's, she monetizes her miscarriage stuff. I'm not going to talk about like her miscarriage journey because like I don't know anything about it. Uh, She monetizes things that are extremely personal, extremely like, I don't know, just not inappropriate things, I feel. Yeah. There are certain things where like miscarriage, in my opinion, depending on how it is talked about, it can be a very uh, good conversation to have. It can be very healing for people who are walking that journey to see other people who are also struggling. And making content take making content takes a lot out of you. And so Mm -hmm. if you're able to monetize it, I have no problem with that. But I do have a problem when you're making content about your dead dog in the moment of you having to shoot it. I do also, there are different things that I have a very big problem about people not only making content about and monetizing it, which we'll talk about more later, but like family vlogs, no. If you don't- Oh, we'll talk about that. Don't don't do that shit. And I- this isn't the only dog. This isn't the I, only dog that, just that we've got. <laughs> so within an eight-year span from 2014 to 2021, Brittany has had 10 different dogs. That's a lot. All ranging in a bunch of different breeds, a lot of them expensive. So you yeah. got to know they were probably shopped. Don't know if they were adopted. That's not confirmed. It's all alleged. I'm just, yeah. I'm just spitballing Your here. Your opinion. But over eight years, 10 dogs. Dogs normally live between 10 to 20 years, depending on the breed and the care. Is a good average. 15 is a good average. Mm-hmm. I'll say 12 for 10 to 12 for purebreds. So mm-hmm. she doesn't have a dog at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. None of these dogs. No. Where did your dogs go, Brittany? Mm hmm. What did you do to your dogs? And she won't She won't talk about this. She will not. People have asked her about it. She doesn't talk about it. I think one of the dogs she talked about needing to rehome for... I think that was her first one. Reason? Yeah. That's like, I only remember one. Not the first one. No, the second one. The the husky. The husky, yes. I think. Uh, I could Which it was like, why did you get a husky? Huskies are the perpetual In toddlers Texas? of dogs. What's wrong yeah. with you? Good Lord. Oh my God, poor thing. It's so hot, that's hot. 10 dogs in eight years. Uh-huh, whatever. Uh, there's a timeline. We'll post that link. You can look at it. You can see all the pictures of the dogs and all the things that she posted about them. Mm-hmm. Even if she had a valid reason to rehome all of these animals, there is a point where it's like, maybe you should just not be an animal owner because mm-hmm. to me, this just points to you are unwilling to take the time and the money 
that is necessary to help your animal thrive, whether that's changing a behavior or a, a uh, you know, getting surgery or fixing something, whatever, whatever it is, you are not putting the time and or money into it. And if that is how you're going to approach animals, that you're only going to care for the ones that don't require your time and money, don't get an animal because they all require your time and money. And you might need to rush one to have emergency surgery tomorrow. And you need to be willing to do True. that. Yeah. If not, don't get a fucking animal. Yeah. Horses too. I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> Horses too. Because she... Any any breathing animal. That, I just feel like Brittany should not have any animals. No, I, I agree with this. She... No animals that she's ever had, horse, dog, whatever. She doesn't have them now. There's been alleged abuse with horses. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the dogs besides the, the mercy killing, but uh, it's just all interesting. We have a link for the for the horse thing too, if you want to look yeah, into that. She still has she still has three horses. Yeah, to this day she ha- she has one, and then or she had one that she's had for a while. Wait, I thought they were with her grandfather. Well, but I think they're still hers though. Okay, okay. She, yeah, so even if they're not like on her property, I think they're still hers. And she introduced two new horses to her old horse and it did That's not right. go over well. And She does this they, whole like ranch life thing. You know, not van life, but like ranch life. Yeah. I just, I don't see her shoveling manure. Manure, I don't manure. either. Did I, I say that I, super I, Alabama style? I, I, I think have, I did. <laughs> I, I have one bunny and come Saturday, well, by the time you guys hear this, it'll be way past that, but I'm going to have three, okay? And I get She's pretty dirty in, in dealing shit. I am. They're, they're, they, they shit a lot, but they're the cutest motherfucking things I've ever seen in my life. I am obsessed with bunnies right now, but it's a lot. And I I get dirty and I have to get my hands into some, My you know, chicken coop. Nasty sh- I don't yeah. want to talk about it. Oh, God. No, they're disgusting. Bunnies they're, are a little bit cleaner. My chickens just poop in their That's, food and water. What's wrong with them? Okay, they they need some therapy because what know. the fuck? I've <laughs> but, tried. But just like she therapize. makes these videos and she looks like so perfect and it's like, you did, yeah, whatever. You have never. I don't. This, you do, it you've feels, never. <laughs> I know we're like completely shitting on her and I'm going to be honest, I don't feel bad about it. If she would be forthcoming, if you're going to put this much shit online, why don't you just be completely transparent though? Like people are going to speculate. I have a when theory. When you leave the blanks open. Mm-hmm. What's I your have theory? A theory? Okay. I want I want, uh, we'll come back to it at the end. Yeah, I want you to keep going, but I have a theory on why she is the way she is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave you hanging for a little while. We're still in 2021, (laughs) April 2021. Okay. Brittany set up a GoFundMe for a homeless man named James who allegedly walked into her church to tithe 15 cents. Brittany and her husband decided to change his life by taking him in and then pooling a bunch of money for James to help him get into rehab. So at the time... A lot of people were like, Brittany is exploiting this man. It's like the whole white woman goes to Nigeria and poses with orphans, (laughs) you know? Exactly. Exactly. It it felt very, and if you watch the videos of this during this time, it felt very exploitative. Like, not, I want to help this homeless man who is struggling with an addiction. It was more... It's like, look what I'm doing. (laughs) I want to help this man and record it so I can get views and monetize it and make money. So it felt like he was a means to an end, not I am doing this out of the kindness of my heart. Because why would you have to film it? Mm -hmm. Oh, and boy, did they film everything. (sighs) So the GoFundMe raised over $25,000. That's a lot of money. Substantial. a lot of money. Uh, So... It kind of, the story goes quiet for a little bit. They don't hear mm-hmm. much about it. But later on, Brittany comes forward and says that they sent him to the Alpha House in Ohio, which is a faith-based addiction treatment center that is free to the resident if they can afford their own counseling fees. That's it. Everything else is free. Okay. You can find that on the facility's website. It is common knowledge. Mm-hmm. So. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure... Wasn't it, um, there was no like licensed professionals? 
I don't know if there was actual like licensed therapists or psychiatrists within the facility. At the facility? Yeah. I don't think at the facility. I don't think so. There was like mental health peers, Mm. I believe. Okay. And you, st- you like you had to pay for your own counseling like outside of it, but if you could oh. like prove that they're in counseling and oh. all that, then you could stay there and like it's like an just an additional like safe space to okay withdraw from your addictions and all that stuff. Okay, that makes sense, and I okay. don't. I I now I'm not having as much of a problem with it as I was prior to that because I thought there was no counseling. But that makes more sense. Like they're in counseling on the outside and they're able to come here. I'm still having problems with it because $25,000, I don't think you need that much. No, you definitely don't. I just (laughs) meant like the facility themselves. For sure. Like for sure. Still not my number one place I would send somebody, but like. Maybe not. Probably be questionable. Oh, but also, didn't people die at this facility? I don't know. I did hear that allegedly. Allegedly. I don't know. I didn't want to open that. (laughs) <laughs> oh, sorry. I opened that can. Never mind. We're going to close it. Moving if on. If you guys want to look into it, you can. But I I don't have a lawyer. Anyway, uh, Justice Just for James. <laughs> Hashtag started to surface <laughs> on Britney's profile everywhere. Um, yes. They were asking, where is he? You know, like, where is this money since this is a free place? Like, what? Uh, what is going on? Right. We don't know. Nope. We don't, I don't know. No answer. Nothing at all. After James got out of rehab, he heard about the GoFundMe. Yes, he did. Tried to reach out to Brittany and allegedly, possibly, not confirmed, Brittany blocked him. Yeah, I heard that. And, but also, like, yes, allegedly, but let's remember, like, she did do this when she did block people when Britney oh, Dawn yeah, Fitness yeah. was having all their scams. So like, it tracks. <sighs> it is a behavior of, that she has yeah. been known to do before. So some people think that she spent the money two different ways. They think either it was spent on her wedding because remember, she got married to Jordan this year in mm-hmm. 2021 in September. Mm-hmm. So they're like, did it go to that? Yeah. Or... Did they save it for a special occasion having to do with a child? Question mark. Uh, mm. uh, were you going to talk about the person on Reddit that calculated yeah, yeah, okay. the expenses? So the girl on Reddit, I and I can't find it. I, so, you know, don't hold me to this. But she had calculated up all of the different costs that they could have encountered trying to help James. And they took in, she took in like um, food, food, clothes, water, uh, hotel, getting him clothes. Um, They did counseling fees and uh, plane tickets and like all of that stuff. And it came out that out of the $25,000, like, and she was being pretty gracious with all of her calculations. After she did all those calculations, it showed that there should have been somewhere around the $11,000 mark left over. But James didn't get any of this. So, Brittany doesn't talk about this. She says that it's like, it's a private matter. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. And um, she says that James said some mean things to them. And but but she claims that her and James's sister are close. Yeah. So like she still keeps tabs on him somehow. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Weird. That caps it on the James story. That's yeah, it for that. That's literally it. But this is one of those <sighs> like again. I'm just gonna leave a little bit of breadcrumbs and make myself <sighs> look. And the way she does it, the way she frames James is in a way of like making him look like the bad guy without outright saying that he's the bad guy. Like he said some stuff and and we don't want to talk about this because it is like we're protecting him and like, oh, poor us. Like we're having to bear all of this burden because like we at took the beginning, 25. Uh-huh. Because we took the whole, 25. I'm not going to talk about it. Here's a little bit. Yep. I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we're, I, because I am took $25,000 of y'all's, but like, I don't have to tell you where it all went. I don't That's care wrong. if you have questions. It's like uh, the audacity that we have to ask. Uh, oh my <laughs> gosh, me. what's wrong yeah. with us? Well, 
2021 was the year for her Christianity to just bloom, you know? Because mm-hmm. she's doing, she's found herself a godly man and she's, she's saved James. Mm-hmm. She's like, she's doing the most. She's getting the good Samaritan points, you know? Yes. She's, she's going to get all the jewels in her crown. I was just about to say the same oh thing. Oh my God, is that all what the that... joys in her crown? <laughs> yeah, I was doing the hand motions. Like she's Lacey getting... made a hand motion to gathering jewels onto a crown. Yes, That's I was funny. just going to say that and be like, did you guys believe that? But yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's like, oh, I'm a spiritual guru now. I'm a new, oh, yeah. newborn Christian again. She got baptized again. And she's like, now I'm the real deal. I'm convicted. I'm all about it as I monetize my religious content. Anyway, so she starts holding women's retreats, women's Christian retreats, for about 650 smackaroonies. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, She shares information on how to be a good Christian. I just like, I'm sorry. I, how long have you been at this? And why... Do you feel like you have the expertise to just step into this role and like lead people and in something that you've been doing for like not even two seconds? Like she did the same thing with fitness. Like I'm just going to walk into this and own this, like, you know, fake it till I make it type thing. Which like can work. Uh huh. And technically it did work. She, I mean, she did it. She made the money. She got the views. She did Uh the thing. Yeah. But was it right? Question no, mark? <laughs> not in my opinion. Just a question. $650. And you know what you get for that? Here's what you get. So a BuzzFeed article had this... <laughs> one of the girls from BuzzFeed... I was about to say, you get one BuzzFeed article for $650. <laughs> one of the girls from BuzzFeed, one of the journalists from it, she um went to one of the retreats and she said... It's like, it's a white room and Brittany's like flowing around in like this ethereal garb, you know, and <laughs> and she's got the fresh highlights. She's got the teeth whitener. Like, it's very pure. There's like pompous grass everywhere. There's like light pink uh, drapery over an arch where like the worship team sits. It's very like feel good. It's like a baby shower threw up on a women's conference. You know, it's just, it's very light and airy feeling. So like Mm -hmm. you're- Very Pinterest-y. Oh, yes. It's Mm -hmm. aesthetically pleasing. I saw Mm -hmm. the pictures. I would, you know, I would like it. (laughs) It's it's not my cup of tea. There needs to be more moody colors involved. She likes the dark academia, if you will. I do. That is is my thing. I wouldn't want to live- in the color scheme that this conference is, but it's nice to look at. It's easy on the eyes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's true. I'll give you um, that. BuzzFeed girl says people are coming up to her saying, God has a special message for you today. Mm. And they're like praying okay. over her. And the worship band plays like super, that like emotional type music with the guitar riff that's like, it like ends on like yeah. a lower <laughs> note and it's on a minor key and it's like, Oh, my soul, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and sings my soul. Yeah, <laughs> like that kind pulls, of thing. Pulls at your heartstrings. For sure. So, uh, you know, Brittany gives a devotional. She shares her testimony. Other women, prayer warriors, if you will, share their testimony. They do an altar call. They've got bathtubs on standby because you pretty much pay to get baptized. Yeah. So it is like, in my opinion, if you've ever been to church camp as a kid, it is it, it is oh, the yeah. adult women's version of church camp to get you on fire for Jesus and then send you back into the world. It's like snorting church camp off a mirror. It's like <laughs> that kind of ethereal high, you know? Yes. Clean cut high. Don't do drugs. <sighs> anyway. But her, like, her testimony and her theology, we already know it's very exclusive at this point. If you don't agree with, like, her views with religion, it's either that God hasn't gotten through to you yet or that you are on the devil's side. So 
There's uh, no, I saw, no in between. No, no, it's extreme views. So there, she made a reel the other day that was like something to the effect of like, when you don't agree that there's just two genders and that marriage oh, should be between a man and a woman and that Israel should be supported. And she like opens a door and like ushers the the viewer out. She's like telling you to get out. Like that's how exclusive her beliefs are. Where it's like, I don't even want to be near you. Like you're wrong wow. all the way. Go away. Like super Christian love, you know? Well, did you say she said in that reel that Israel needs to be supported? Like if you're saying that you support? Yeah, I, something, yeah. Yeah, that that Israel is like the one <laughs> kind of thing, and and that's what she's saying. Like, if you have that view, get out. Or or she's saying that's no, no, no. her. If you view. don't, sorry, if you don't support Israel, get out. Oh, okay. Because I was sorry. like, I'm like, she's she's in support of Palestine. Uh, like, I'm yeah, shocked, sorry. If you like, don't wow. support Israel, get out. If you don't support the fact that she thinks there's only two genders, get out. All that stuff. Yeah very conservative views. So, and she also, she makes some wild accusations. Like, I can't shop at TJ Maxx anymore because they sell Ouija boards and like satanic stuff because it was Halloween and like there was some Halloween decor that she found offensive. And it's just very like, oh my God, then don't ever shop anywhere because everywhere that sells Halloween decor (sighs) is going to have a Ouija board in some way, shape or form. Uh, I think she's one of those ones that also believes that an upside down cross is satanic. <laughs> yeah, a thousand percent. And if you don't know, an upside down cross is just St. Peter's cross because he was like, yeah. I'm not worthy to be crucified like the Savior. Yes. It's nothing to do with Satan. <laughs> it was his also, way of you life. die quicker upside down. Yeah. Just, it's true. True that. You go into cardiac arrest a lot. It was like his quicker. way of honoring feeling like he was honoring God. No, yeah. It was in oh, yeah. reverence. Like it, it was super like beautiful type of tribute, you know, when he knew he was going to be crucified. So it's like, we're not making fun of that at all. No, not at all. I mean, but the upside down cross is not satanic. (laughs) No. At all. So, yeah, she's, she advocates heavily for a purity culture. Like, oh my God, she does the whole modest is hottest thing. That's like half of her sermons that she does. It's just like how sex is super bad and masturbation to, like dishonors your husband and yourself. Mm-hmm. It's like don't don't uh, touch your downstairs kitty cat because if you do, Jesus will be mad. I feel so bad for like all the all the women specifically mm-hmm. that believe her. Mm-hmm. You know, like all the little girls that probably look up to her. You know, yeah. it's like and <sighs> we're, we're laughing and we're making fun of this, but in reality, like. I was also one of those people. Like I was same, not as aesthetically pleasing of a version of Brittany Dawn without the social no. media presence. I was in a cult. I believed you couldn't masturbate. I masturbated one time, one, count it, one time throughout all four and a half years of college. One. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding. And I felt Wait. like shit. I was like, you evil woman. Okay, because I would masturbate like every night and immediately ask for forgiveness. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> you had a better idea of it than I did. I God. was like, everybody will know if I touch it. Oh. And I will that's like, weird. I will burn. If and... they do, that would be their problem. <laughs> I know, right? You have a camera in my room. Get out. Uh, but what yeah, are you doing no. at my at my window, Jacob? <laughs> Jake, Jacobson, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. One time. That's it. See, this is a big deal. Even though this isn't a crime to be talking about purity culture, she believes in the narrative that women bring rape upon themselves. <gasps> I did not know this. That like, we are the ones committing sin by like w- dressing a certain way and that our brothers, you know, can't help but stumble when they see our breasts, our legs, whatever. It's like, She's adding to that narrative. That pisses me off. I did Say not more. know that about her. They have done so much research to debunk this stupid myth, opinion, whatever. They even have a fucking museum where it says what I wore, or I think is like 
or what she wore or whatever. And oh, yeah. There's so many art pieces that say this, yes. what I was wearing. And it's like a child wearing like a long sleeve dress and tights well, and like, shoes. One was like a baby um, jumpsuit or like one yeah. girl's was like a baggy t-shirt and sweatpants. Like it doesn't matter. There, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. And if it was, I saw this posted and I was like, oh my God, that's genius. If it was the clothes mm-hmm. that you were wearing that was making somebody who is attracted to you rape you, mm-hmm. then why aren't lesbians raping women? Say more. It does happen. It does happen. However, statistically, ra- uh, like the, the ratio is heavily offset. Heavily, astronomically <laughs> higher. So if women, lesbians can control themselves around a hot woman showing some flesh, why can't a man? You know, that even occurred to me when I was like in gym, at, like in middle school, because like we had two girls that identified as lesbian and mm. they wouldn't look at other girls or like if they did, I mean, they didn't have a lingering I, I, yeah, or they, they were touch them or <gasps> can you believe it? They had bodily autonomy, <laughs> what respect, boundaries, all the things, consent, yeah. Wow, who'd have thought? So her uh, retreats and stuff mostly happened in 2021, spilling over into 2022. Also, in 2022, Texas announced that they were suing Brittany Dawn. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> because I know in the background, you've been like, wait, what happened with the scam, though? Like, what is happening? What? Is it just, that's it? It happened and that's no. done? They got money back or they didn't and that's it? No. Texas in the background, said, hold my beer. <laughs> pretty much. In the background. <laughs> the investigation took a while. You know, you got to yeah. get all your facts straight. So it was in the works. People hadn't stopped talking. Angie, all of the girls on Facebook, everywhere. People were still talking about this. So in the midst of all that, a lot of her videos are taken down. A lot of her content for fitness is taken down. Uh, you know, because she's she's fully embracing the God lifestyle. Mm-hmm. The like white woman Christian lifestyle, whatever. Mm-hmm. Live, and laugh, a lot of those, love. A lot of those video, fitness videos, she was un inappropriately dressed. Oh yeah. She was not modest. So we needed to take that. That's why she took a lot of her Mm -hmm. like pictures on Instagram down. If you scroll back Mm -hmm. down on her Instagram, there's some from like very early stages of her fitness journey where she's wearing like shorts and a sports bra. And I'm surprised those are still up. But the ones from like her bikini days are gone. Mm -hmm. So well, November 15th of 2022. You know, she's she's talking about like her godly marriage all this year and she's talking about like She's, they've been trying to conceive and everything. She's putting everything in God's hands. Mm -hmm. God, God, God. November 15th of 2022, she posts a car seat saying God has a plan for their family. Didn't think she'd she'd be here with this. You know, she has like a stroller and another one where she's talking about children. I don't know. Yeah. Um, They're kind of vague. Yeah. But you know that like something's happening. Something's happening. It's to pique interest on, like it's on purpose. So yeah, she's dropping those breadcrumbs again. And she's already talked about her miscarriage all over her YouTube. So you're, everyone's like, is it happening? Rainbow baby? Because like that's super exciting for anybody. A rainbow baby. So which it would be exciting for her and I wouldn't take that away from her because no, yeah. Miscarriage is traumatic. Yeah. I really was thinking that she was pregnant. Yeah. Like when I started looking to it, I was like, oh, okay. What's up? Well, November 30th, 2022, so 15 days later, she posted a picture of her and Jordan's hands with pens saying that they were signing paperwork to be foster parents. And on December 12th of 2022, they post a photo with a foster child with their face blurred out. I That's already quick. have issues with That's this quick. whole thing. Yeah. I couldn't find the organization that the child is from because obviously like that information is protected. I did look though, because I thought if it's one of those like weird privatized things that are like not necessarily government regulated, mm-hmm. they may have like a picture of like, oh, Brittany Dawn is is one of our mm-hmm. foster parents, you know, like sometimes they'll do that on the on the websites, but I don't know where this child came from. Yeah. But that is extremely quick. 
to be getting a child. The What makes me think it was something through the government um, was because I'm from Texas. I was born and raised in Texas, so I can talk shit about Texas all I want, okay? Yeah. Uh, Texas, <laughs> <laughs> Texas has really gone down the shitter the last, like, handful of years. And they're... Thank you, Greg Abbott, for being a dickwad. Anyways, the dildo face. Exactly. Absolutely. Their, um, like, children, amount of children that are in foster care is astronomically high and has been for a very long time. And so everybody was very shocked that, like, it went so fast. I, knowing that they lived in Texas, was not You're not shocked. They're desperate to get people to... Um, get kids, get a place for a kid to stay because they are overwhelmed. Kids are sleeping on floors in many of these cities. Oh, God. It is, it's, it's bad. And it's bad all across the United States. And so it doesn't shock me that they got it and it okay. was expedited. With her having such a large social media presence, I think that probably helped expedite it pretty quickly. But because of something she shares later on about the child and where the child came from, like the situation. We'll get to it. Yeah. It makes me think that did come from the government. Like the government had to step in to get the child away. And so that's what makes me think it was not a privatized system that she went through. Not to say that I'm okay with how fast it went or that it was okay that she got the child. Yes, I understand that these children do need a safe space, but Brittany Dawn is not a safe space in my opinion. No, I don't think so. There's been a lot of speculation on TikTok from social workers saying, like, even if this was all done through the government, the fact that it happened so quickly and that they got a baby. This is a baby, like, straight up newborn. And coupled with the fact that Texas has a lawsuit against her. That's where a lot of people were having, like, conflicting thoughts about it. Yeah. As somebody who knows true crime and we cover so many different cases, um, I have found out that a lot of interstate agencies do not communicate with one another. Oh, hell no. Exactly. So it's hard to even (sighs) get one police uh, uh, like office, like jurisdiction to talk to the jurisdiction right beside them and to share information. And so since there's not that interconnection, and since the lawsuit was still ongoing, nothing was like actually fought, like nothing had been settled at this point. Like it was still ongoing. That's true. Um, I don't know that anything was technically really available or dinging her background. And also the background doesn't really care if you're scamming people. They just care like, have you hurt a child? Have Are you a felon? Have you done drugs? Have you sold drugs? Have, you know, they're looking more for the background and being sued doesn't come up on a background. Her crime doesn't, doesn't mm-hmm. really fit with. Yeah. Yeah. So in my opinion, as somebody who actually like look, not, not as some, like with somebody that has like knowledge of interconnecting systems yeah. that aren't talking to each other, and how overrun the system is in Texas. You can see where all the lines connect for this Te- to be like the perfect storm. And, and Texas fucks up all the time. Like, Texas. Like, Texas, yeah. give, like, the, and, and just like the government's foster care system fucks up all the time as well. So like them giving this new parents a newborn baby. Yeah, that's across the board. They they, yeah. they fuck up all the time. So it doesn't shock me, unfortunately. It should, but it doesn't. I'll just say... If you can't care for a dog, you don't deserve a kid. A fucking men say more. Uh, th- that's it. Say more. I think that this is for clout, like a white savior complex. Absolutely. Just like what she did with James. Like, it's just, it's the same thing. So uh, she does overshare about the child's medical information. She doesn't say things that are, she doesn't say the the child's name. She doesn't say, uh, she doesn't show like their face. She shows their hands and feet. Their pictures are still up on her Instagram now. You know, she she does like some protection for their identity, but a lot of their day-to-day things and medical symptoms, as well as kind of the story of the child and the mother, she talks about 
and she but she talked about it on the Instagram stories, which disappear after 24 hours. People did take screenshots, and they are out there if you want to see them. I don't think you should try to go find them and read about this, though, because, like, it paints the mom in such a light that she has no control over what Brittany's saying. And it also, no one needs to know about, like, all the personal things with the child's day-to-day or their symptoms or any of their medical information, you know. It, it, it disregards the human that is literally involved in this situation that is struggling for unknown reasons. It completely disregards it. It reminds me a lot of like when Christians look at people who need to have an abortion and they mm-hmm. look at the person and they're like, you are evil, you are committing murder. Instead of looking at the reasons why the the abortion is necessary. And there is a laundry list of reasons why somebody would get an abortion, but they don't care. She was looking at this mother and she didn't care because what she had done or the situation she had found herself in was unacceptable. And that gave Brittany the right in her mind to be able to... To say, you're not a good mom, let me be a good mom. Yeah, talk trash. And it was disgusting. Yeah, because that wasn't the point. The point of this child being placed in foster care was so the parents could address their issues, get things better, and at the same time, have the child in a safe, healthy environment so that they could thrive, you know? Mm-hmm. So they don't have that child anymore. Mm-mm. And she also, uh, she was calling herself that child's like, I am I am I'm a mother. I am this child's mother. She was saying, I'm a mother. She wasn't saying, like some, a lot of foster parents will say, oh, foster mom, foster dad, or temporary mom, temporary dad, second mom, second dad. Mm-hmm. But they won't call themselves that person's mother or mom or dad. Yes, yes. Because it's confusing to the ch- children, especially when they're young. And it's just kind of disrespectful, you know? Reunification is always the goal. For sure. Whether that's able to happen or not, reunification is always the goal. And when you automatically put yourself in that position of like, I am the mother, not, are you doing motherly duties? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you are caring, you are stepping in as the caretaker for that child in order to give the parents the, the, the space to heal, grow, and do what they need to do to, to get better. So reunification can happen. Don't step into being the mom because that's not your place. Well, really, that's it for the fostering. They did get a second child. I don't have much information on that, though. There wasn't I don't either. a lot of... They didn't post about it as much. So mm-hmm. I don't know if they had them for an even shorter amount of time than the baby. But yeah, whatever. They didn't post about it. So who cares? Yeah, which I like that they didn't. Good job. I'm I'm happy about that. I don't think kids belong on social media. Amen. That's just me. Amen. Skipping over... Back to 2023. We're, we're to the home stretch now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so late April, early May of 2023. In court, they settled the lawsuit $400,000. She owes $400,000. Let's break it down. $300,000 in civil penalties and $100,000 in restitution. And Lacey found out for us that it was all due within three years. So three years. She did girl math. Oh, she did I the did, girl I math. I did my girl math. She said, uh, so if she makes equal payments each month, she'll need to pay about $11,100 every single month for three years. <laughs> Where the fuck that's coming from? <laughs> like, I mean, uh, who has that money? Also, on top of that, she's been forbidden by the court to sell any plans, even remotely fitness or nutrition Mm. adjacent, you know? Yeah. And uh, she's forbidden from coaching on eating disorders permanently. Amen. Also, she cannot charge a shipping fee for goods or services delivered by email. (laughs) She charged a shipping fee. (sighs) What the... Fuck, she charged us a shipping fee. I love that Texas just like completely, I I think I can say that they banged her ass, you know? Like they, (laughs) yeah, they, you know, 
Bob's Burger, Bob they Burgers Bob's it. Burgered it. They, they Bob's yeah, Burgered they did. it. <laughs> yeah, they Bob's Burgered it. <laughs> so just to cap off everything, charging money for spiritual guidance is criminal in my opinion, but not against the law. Purity culture contributes heavily to body dysmorphia and eating disorders and animal abuse and just child, weird child things, weird fostering yeah. things. And don't do that. And don't scam people. I didn't think we'd yeah. have to write that one down, but... I know, but apparently we do. Yeah, so please don't let anything that Brittany does uh, affect you at all. Yeah. She's, honestly, she's just like, unwell in my opinion she's just she needs help not from religion but like to see a licensed psychiatrist and get to the root of what's really going on in her because I think she could be a good person I don't think anyone really is too far gone and I I think that she could really she could do better you know I really think she could turn things around if she would just Here's one thing. I'm not a Christian anymore, but the thing with being a Christian influencer is that it requires a lot of pride. And if you remember in scripture, I think it's said probably like 50 times that pride is like one of the worst things that you can hold true to and live your life by because And I know like on the surface, it's like, what is she being prideful about? What's being prideful is putting out an image of yourself in your day-to-day as if that's the standard for everyone all the time. It's not being real. (laughs) It's not being authentic with anything really. So honestly, I I think I understand she's a newborn Christian and I'm not telling you what to do, Brittany. Uh, I just think it might be beneficial to just skim back over the pride sections of whatever role manual you've decided to subscribe to. This is my opinion. Absolutely I love my it. opinion. I love your opinion. <laughs> but I I don't think Brittany Dawn, I don't think she know who's, knows who she is. Maybe and not. She is going to adapt to what people see her as good or or what she is good at. If she is getting attention from a certain area, then she is going to adapt herself like a chameleon and just blend into what she is expected and thrive in that situation. She definitely loves attention, which I get. Who I doesn't? understand that. Not a bad thing in my opinion, but if you use that attention to literally be your whole identity, then you're you're going to have problems over and over and over again. People saw her as a good fitness instructor. And so she took that and turned it into this fitness business. And then it turned into a scam. And then, you know, she falls into Christianity and people are like, oh, you know, like she's changed. She's been better. You know, she's, she's you know, changed from her old ways. And People gave her attention for that. And so she's adopting into that and morphing herself into this. I think she does it for attention. And honestly, I just don't think she knows who she is, which I relate to a lot. Like that's what I was in religion. I didn't know who I was. I morphed into who I was expected to be by the leaders around me. And that's very common. I think you're on track with that for sure. And you know what, Brittany, if you ever hear this, I don't feel bad for shitting on you because you shat on a bunch of people. (laughs) Same. Same. But I really do hope good things for you. I really do hope that you figure out who you are and just stop making content. I know. I agree. I don't think she will, but... (laughs) Probably not, but... Whatever. Uh, you want to do a palate cleanser? Cause, I like, need to do a palate cleanser because Jesus Christ, cl- cleanser. I feel like I haven't been able to talk 
at all a this talc. episode. A talc. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to leave the state. Okay. I'm so over this. Anyway, so my palate cleanser today is a cute little love story that I am absolutely head tell me, tell me, tell with. me. I love love. So I, I can't give names because, you know, it's not my story. But there is somebody I know who him and his wife had two daughters and they're young. They're like very young, or one's young ele- young elementary age, one's older elementary age. And a couple of years ago, the mom ended up getting brain cancer and she died. Trust me, we're getting to the love part. Okay, so like there's a little sad, but then it gets better. I was okay? going to say, good Lord, what have it, you done? <laughs> oh my gosh. And these girls are the absolute sweetest. They're beautiful. They're the like, I love these children so much. And so they, I found out that their mom had died and it broke my heart. And it, they went through a, a a little over a year without them. At the same time, a another woman that I know was she was um used to be engaged to this man, and then they broke it off because the man didn't want to have kids. She wanted to have kids. It's just l- different life choi- desires, and so they parted ways. Shortly after they parted ways, this man gets diagnosed with stage four terminal cancer. So well, they <sighs> get. I know it's really sad. So they get back together, together, Mm -hmm. not really, but like she is like the only person he has to take care of him. Okay. And so she takes care of him for the next like six to eight months as he is literally dying. She is with him when he dies. He dies, he passes on and they just, you know, whatever. Well, I found out the other day that this little girl's dad and her... (gasps) met and they have been Stop. to like together and dating and like everything and they're engaged now shut up i'm <laughs> fucking crying i love love uh, i'm such a when, slut for love i love it <laughs> I just, like, when, my, when i found out i was like that is the perfect couple they're like the cutest and the sweetest just like there's just my heart bursts open i know it's so good so i was like i'm you know so what? happy for them I'll speak in code, but I got to share this story because it's too damn cute. It's Whoever. like Hallmark. Hallmark oh, yeah. couldn't even make it this cute. <laughs> oh, I agree. Whoever you are out there, congratulations. That's amazing. That I so love cute. it. Okay. Anyways, your story, Lola. <laughs> no cancer involved here. Uh, yes. My story Woo-hoo. is that my dog, Weya, the one that you sometimes hear. Um, she, sweet Weya. When we first moved back to Alabama, because I got her when I lived in Tennessee, if you didn't know that. We had to go to the vet, and so we went to this new vet, and she was nervous, and she already doesn't like standing on those big, flat metal scales uh, to get weighed. So she, uh, the the vet tech, which is like this hippie-looking dude that's like 16 or 17, <laughs> maybe. He's very young, and he's trying to coax her on, and she's just not having it, and so he just reaches down and scoops her up. She is a large dog, okay? She, she got she's, some girth on her. She's my sick goddess. I love her. <laughs> and he picks her up and he looks her in the face and he says, I'm so sorry. I should have never asked you your weight. You're a, like something about, you're a lady. I shouldn't be asking your weight. And <laughs> he steps onto the scale with her and then just subtracts his weight from it. And then he sets her down and he's like, I'm sorry, I had to manhandle you. That wasn't very nice. And then, I mean, she's fine. She's like, she was so happy about it. She loved she's being fine. held and he gave yeah. her a treat. And then he looked at me and he's like, she's at normal weight. Don't worry. Everything is good. Thank you. And then just leaves. And I was like, <laughs> Thank you for being I, nice. And that is our primary care clinic for that, her yeah. so, to this day. That was like five years ago. I just love that he like leaned down and picked her up. was like, I'm sorry, I should never ask a lady her weight. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> he was very, apo- like, very apologetic, very genuine. Like, you are very sweet. So sweet. Yeah. So adorable. Little hippie oh, man. I love yeah. it. I love it. Oh, That's all for well, today. Today's a long episode, so I hope you hung in there with us. And we hope you have a wonderful 2024 and that it was better than last year. Happy so, fucking New do Year. Your thing. Yeah, happy fucking New Year, heathens. So good. Bye. Bye. Hey, heathens, if you're enjoying the show so far, we would love for you to rate, subscribe, 
do all the fun things to get us more subscribers and more reviews. Leave a review. Do it. The Deadly Fifth Podcast is brought to you by Choircast Network. It is produced by Lacey Bean and Lola Robbins and audio engineered by Eric Howe. Thanks for listening. <laughs>